Bibles now to the book of Matthew, chapter number 1. Matthew, chapter number 1. We're, we're, we're going to continue um, our, our Christmas study, uh, and it's entitled, uh, Emmanuel, God with us. You know, when, when, when the revelation, we're going to see it today, when the revelation was made to Joseph, as to who his son would be, he said, Emmanuel, God with us. And, and part of the birth of Jesus Christ, and, and part of the beauty of what it all is, is what comes to verse is, uh, is uh, John three seventeen. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. It's a time when God said, hey, I have all the authority to judge sinful sinners, but no, I'm going to send my only son to provide a way for salvation. I have not forsaken the sinners, but rather have come to uh, send Jesus Christ to make a way. Why? Because I am with them. Uh, I, I, th I think of all the times where, where God said, and, and, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And, and it's such a wonderful thing that, this, that, that, uh, that the Christmas season was the start of the life of Christ that made all the difference. And, and so last week we talked about how, how, how much of a beautiful picture uh, that was, how Jesus Christ came in such an unlikely way. But really what we saw revealed uh, as the announcement was made uh, to Mary is how God's grace, God's unmerited favor had come upon man and had come upon Mary. And, and so and it came in, in such an unexpected way. And it's, it's an amazing picture that we saw last week. And, and so this week we're, we're going to look at uh, uh, the announcement made to Joseph. We're going to see how it, was, it, was, <laughs> it came above in different circumstances than it came to Mary. Uh, but regardless, it, it is still God's plan, um, and it is still wonderful. It's still amazing. Um, and so look, we're going to look to Ma Matthew chapter 1. We're going to start reading in verse number 18. And it reads, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on the wise. When as his mother, Mary, was espoused, espoused, contractually married, right? Not yet come together. We're going to talk about that. His mother, Mary, was espoused to Joseph before they came together, right? Before they physically came together. It says she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. And verse 19 says, Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily or privately. Verse 20, and while he thought on these things, right? So while he was meditating on all these things and, and, and thinking about all these things, the, the Bible says that the revelation came before him. It says, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, Fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. With that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. That is God's hand that is working this out. Verse 21, and says, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not, so she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. And he called his name Jesus. So, so we're, we're, we're now looking at this, uh, at the announcement made from, from, from the perspective of Joseph, right? And, and the title of today's message is God's plan 
my life. God's plan, our life. And we're going to see it from the perspective of Joseph uh, this morning. Let's, let's ask the Lord to, to, to be with us this morning. Heavenly Father, God, we, we're so grateful for uh, another day that you've given us. Lord, Lord, thank you so much for just, just continuing to work in our lives. Lord, we know that you are determined to do a mighty work in our lives. Lord, we know that you love us and that you care for us so deeply, Lord, and, and help us to just uh, love you and care for you, Father. Lord, help us to love one another like you have loved us. Father, th th this Christmas story is, is so beautiful, Lord, and, and the Word of God is perfect, Lord. Help the Word of God to touch our hearts this morning and that we may be changed when we leave here today. Father, I pray that you give me wisdom to, to preach your Word, Lord, uh, that, that, that it not be me, but, Lord, that, that, that God's people might hear from you. Father, I pray that uh, your word would illuminate and enrich and change our lives as you have, uh, as you have, uh, wants, as you want our, the word, your word to change our lives. So, Father, help us to not have anything that can hinder us or, or distract us, or Lord, put the message away that you want us to hear from you, Father. Father, thank you so much for just the birth of Christ and all the blessings and all the goodness that it brings. Father, we love you. Draw our hearts closer to you this morning. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So, so we talk about God's plan, my life. You, you know, in life, I think sometimes we can have such specific <laughs> and profound plans for our life. And, and if, if you've been living this Christian life for any amount of time, you know that our lives and our plans do not exactly go hand in hand. You know, if, if there's ever come an unexpected event that has changed the course of your life, and, 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 and God's hand, uh, is it, God is in control, God's hand is in it, but there, there, there are things in our lives that change our lives from that moment forward, right? I think we call that life-changing events. From what that time, an event happened in your life, it changed the trajectory of the rest of your life, right? Uh, you know, for a lot of people, it's, you know, it's, it's marriage. For a lot of people, it's kids. For a lot of people, it's, it's a sudden thing that happened in their family, whatever the case may be. But from that moment forward, your life was different, right? And so when we talk about our life and God's plan for our lives, we have to understand is that when we, when we talk about our lives and God's plan, is, is we, we talk about all the time is how we will not always understand God's plan for our life. We will not understand it. And Joseph, we're going to talk about him, he, he did not understand, he did not fully conceptualize, he thought he understood, but he did, not, he did not really understand what was going on in his life. But I can tell you this with 100% certainty, is that God's hand was upon his life. And, and though he did not understand all the things that were happening, is that God had a greater plan for, for, for his life, and it came to bring above, above upon a greater good, and that is the Lord himself, Jesus Christ, who will take away the sin of the world. And, and so he, that's what we see, is, is, is we see God's plan for, from bringing uh, the baby Jesus from the perspective of Joseph. You know, and, and, and what we need to understand about our lives uh, that I hope we, we, we catch today is, is the fact that we have to understand that our lives are not about us. Our lives are not about us. They are to serve a greater purpose in God's plan of redemption. How God plans to save people from their sins. And our lives are not our own. No, we were bought with a price. And so therefore, we are part of God's greater plan. And though we may not always understand... And though we may sometimes misunderstand, no, no, God's hand is upon us. So we're going to look at that uh, this morning. So first, we're, we're going to see the state of Joseph. You know, what was going on through his mind? Let's look at verse 18. It says, now the birth of Jesus Christ was on the wise. So Jesus Christ was soon going to be born. He, he, here's the circumstances. And it says, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. And so understand that the term espoused, like we said before, they are contractually 
married. They are husband and wife at this point. Uh, they had not physically come together, but they were contractually married. Our commentary uh, f- from David uh, Gusick ex- explains, you know, there's the concept of engagement, all right, espoused, and, and, and what we think of, you know, married, uh, specifically in, in biblical context, right? So oftentimes, especially in the Bible, uh, what we see from engagements is, let me, let me just read this. It says, this could happen when the bride and groom uh, to be, were to be quite young, and it was often arranged by parents. So oftentimes in the Bible, you know, we see uh, sometimes arranged marriages. Okay, not forced. <laughs> it's not a forced marriage. It's not like the, the people didn't have any option. But that is often what we see. I, you know, I, I think of um, Isaac. Um, I think of um, the, his sons. It, it, we see examples in Scripture of, of people who were set to be married for, for a long time. Now, that doesn't mean that there's a commitment yet, right? There's just, you know, we look for, to be fu- uh, married in the future. We don't know if this, it was this way for, for Mary and Joseph. But now they had come to this uh, espoused period or, 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 or betrothal. Uh, uh, I can't speak right now. But it was, it was espoused. It is, is, it, this is a previous engagement that is official and binding. Okay? During the, this time, the couple were, were known as husband and wife which is what Mary and Joseph was known, okay? And it could only be broken by divorce, okay? So this is a state uh, that Mary and Joseph were in. And, and so they were contractually married, not yet come together physically in one house, in one place. Uh, as, as the, how the Bible says how Joseph did not know his wife yet. They had not had yet a physical relationship. So if you think about it from, from Joseph's perspective, I mean, just, just think about it. He was set to be married uh, to Mary. Set to be married to Mary. Yes, he was set to be married to Mary. And, you know, he was looking forward to it. I, I mean, any couple that is, uh, that their husband and wife, they're, and they're set to come together, I mean, you're looking forward to this period. And, and at this time, you know, he, he, had, he had just been faithfully waiting. The Bible tells us that he was a just man, that, that, he, that they, he loved the Lord. And, and so during this time when she, uh, Mary, was found pregnant, right, you, you can just imagine how much it would have crushed Joseph, right, how he had been uh, faithfully waiting for his wife. And, and in his mind, right, she was found pregnant, okay? Now, some people say, or some people might say that, you know, um, you know, Joseph, you know, should have known that <laughs> this was to be the child Jesus. And, you know, the scriptures say that, that the virgin was, that, that Jesus would be born of a, of a, of, of a virgin and, and all these things. But understand, this is, this is a one and done deal. Like, this did not happen any other time that we have evidence of in scripture when, when, a, ma- when a woman had a child and she was a virgin, right? So... I can think of how Joseph uh, would have been just devastated at the fact that by all by by <laughs> all means everything that he would have thought that his wife had was unfaithful to this point, right? So so what we see because we know the seriousness um, of this act of adultery. You know when when a, when a man and a woman come together, the Bible says well, from the beginning, right? Genesis two twenty four. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they shall be one flesh. And, and so, again, this, this act of betrayal, uh, uh, Joseph would have been crushed by it. Joseph would have been crushed by it. And, and I think it's important to understand, to be in, this, in, the, in, the feet, in, the, in the spot of Joseph, to truly understand what was going on in the scriptures. And I think we should do that all the time, right? When, when, we're, when we're reading the Bible, when we're reading Scripture, don't just, you know, fly through it. You know, what, what is going on in the mind of the characters? What are they going through? Because when we see what they're going through, we can see how God showed up in their lives, right? And we can learn so much from it. But I understand that Joseph would have been incredibly upset. Jo- uh, just <laughs> he would have been incredibly upset. And so... Understand that when we're in this state, 
is that God does and can and will answer our cries. And he will help, and what we see with Joseph is that he helped him to understand and that he restored him. And so if we want God in our lives, right, in, in these times to show up and to make a difference in our lives, we have to make sure that we, we're staying faithful despite the circumstances that are going on. What we see from this scripture is, is look, I mean, look at verse uh, number 19. It says, then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, right, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately, privately. And, and it says, but while he taught on these things, right, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream. And so what we see is that Joseph was a just man. Joseph loved the Lord. Joseph loved his wife, and he wasn't, he wasn't willing to make a public example. He, was, he didn't want to uh, just, just shame her or anything like that. No, he was a just man, and he wanted to follow the Lord. And, and, and this is so key. Why? Because sometimes when we do not understand how easy is it for us to go our own way. Well, God, I've been faithful, and look what's happening to me now. Look what's happening to me now. I, I, how can this be? I've been, I've been faithful to Mary. I've been faithful to serve you. And I just don't understand what's happening in my life. This is where Joseph was. And, and not only that, he, 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 here's the thing. Here's the thing about uh, so when somebody has a walk with the Lord, you don't want to take it out on the other person, right? You, you don't want to... Uh, uh, you, you don't want to, that person to, to, to suffer embarrassment or, or that person to uh, just, 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 just suffer ridicule or anything like that. No, no, you want the best for this person. Why? That's because, that, because that is the love of God. That is the love that comes from God. Why? Because when we are unfaithful, here's the key, when we are unfaithful to God, He is still faithful to us. And He's still wanting to restore us to Him. And so this is a love that can only come from God and say, hey, hey, I want, I'm going to put it away privately. Why? Because, I'm, because I want the best for Mary, because I love the Lord. And, and, and no doubt when we've messed up, God says, hey, they, they've been unfaithful to me, but I still want to reconcile them to me. I still want to restore them. I still want what's best for them. I'm still going to forgive them. And so that's, that's the God that we serve. That, and we, we see that revealed in the person of who Joseph is, is when you realize how wicked you are and you realize how you fall short, the actions of other people will bother you less and less. And no doubt Joseph was indeed, indeed heartbroken, and this was something that he was looking very much forward to. But understand this is that when you have a love that comes from God and God changes you from the inside out, the way that you look at other people will be different. Amen. And you will not want vengeance upon others, and you will not want to wish others harm. You will want what is best for them. Amen. Why? Because that is what God wants. It's about developing the heart and the mind of Jesus Christ who loved us and gave himself for us. That, that is who Christ was, and that's who we should be in him. And so we, we have to stay faithful when we don't understand. We have to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit calling our lives. Why? Because God wants to, and we've talked about this again and again, God wants to show up in your life. God wants to reveal himself even when you don't understand. And that's not going to happen if we don't stay faithful. Why? Because we'll miss it. We'll miss what God is doing. If we, miss, if we don't stay faithful to the Lord and if we're not sensitive to the Holy Spirit and listening to the voice of God, we can totally miss the revelation we can totally miss the revelation that God has for us. And so the, the Bible says uh, in verse 20, But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream. Right? And so what happened? God showed up in his life in such a mighty way. Hey, hey, I'm, I'm preaching. God showed up in the life of Joseph in such a mighty way. The angel, the messenger, angel means messenger, the angel of God appeared to Joseph in a dream. And, he, and in this dream, he, he would reveal to Joseph all the things that he did not understand, and he would give him the peace and comfort that he needed. So, so verse 20, but while he thought on these things, the Bible says, Behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream. And this is what he said, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, now, I was just reading that, Joseph, that son of David. 
he is reminding Joseph of his lineage. Right? You got you to get this. This was all connected. Hey, the Messiah was to come from the seed of David. He starts off by saying, hey, Joseph, thou son of David. And he would continue to make those connections. Joseph, thou son of David. Look what he says. Fear not, take unto thee Mary thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And so, what does the angel do? The, the, the angel is giving Joseph reassurance. Joseph reassurance. You know, sometimes when things don't happen the way that we think that they should happen, sometimes we, 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 t we have a tendency to um, think, Lord, did I just get everything wrong? Or was I just mistaken in my life? Should I have taken married a wife? Lord, was, was I following my will and not your will? And, and sometimes when we don't understand the circumstances that are going on, we start to question whether or not we're following the Lord. And, and you know how good our God is? Our God is so good that he gives us the reassurance that we need to keep going. God gives us the reassurance to say, hey, you know, son, hey, daughter, you are going the right way. Keep going. And so he, when the angel says, uh, Joseph, the son of David, Fear not to take unto thee, Mary, thy wife. So there, there, there we see the reassurance. There we see the commandment, the direction that, that the angel gives. And then he says, why? Fear not to take unto thee, thy Mary, to, uh, to thee, Mary, thy wife. He says, for, and it says, thy wife, they are married. <laughs> uh, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. So, so no doubt they would have, you know, they would have had a conversation. And, you know, Mary, the, the revelation was given to Mary first by the other angel. Um, the revelation would have been given to her. And no doubt they would have had a conversation. But, you know, Joseph, you know, we, again, the scripture doesn't give us this. But we, we were led to believe that, you know, the angel appeared to Mary and then Joseph and then she was pregnant. <laughs> and now the angel is appearing to, uh, to, to Joseph. And essentially, you would have said, hey, what your wife told you was true. You know, what you, she is. <laughs> she is the, the, the mother of, 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 of the coming Messiah. She, she will bring forth Emmanuel, God with us. You know, she, she, she was not lying to you, Joseph. No, she was telling the truth. It, it, this is that one... <laughs> That one in a million where we're, yes, she, she, she is a virgin uh, that, that, will be, that will bring forth the Son of God. And so she, he gives them reassurance. Um, and then he, and he explained, here's the key. Here's where it comes together. Verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Why? For he shall save his people from their sins. And then further explanation. Joseph, right? Now all this was done. Hey, Joseph, it came to pass this way. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted, is God's with us. Here's where it comes together. Why did Jesus Christ come forth in this way? Why? Because he had to. We know that sin is passed through the seed of man. Joseph, well, we call him Jesus' stepfather, could not have been born of Joseph. Why? Because Jesus needed to be sinless. He needed to not uh, inherit this, this, this sinful flesh and this, and this sinfulness that we deal with. Why? So God can save his people from their sins. So, so, so here's the connection. Is that, is that God's plan for Joseph's life, he did not understand. He did not get it. But the reason it came about the way 
is here it is again. His life is not about him. His life is about God and his plan. It's about saving. It's about the redemptive work of the Lord and what is needed to be done to save people. Listen, friends, our lives, our lives are not about us. It's about God's plan about his redemptive work. It's about him working all things together for the good of him that love him and doing it in such a way where God is revealed to us in our lives. And it's about a greater, more important plan. God's plan. It's about God's plan. And understand this is not understanding. It's not a bad thing. Not understanding all the things that's going on is not a bad thing. We will never, I think I said this last week, we will never fully understand God's plan and all that God is doing in our lives. Why? If we understood everything, then he wouldn't be God. <laughs> if we understood everything, we wouldn't need to trust him and have faith in him. No, no, no. Not understanding is not a bad thing because why did we say last week that we walk by faith and not by sight? We walk by faith and not by sight. We walk trusting in God. And so though, though we may not understand, when we pray to him, he gives us that reassurance of, no, 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 go this way. Fear not to take Mary to wife. Hey, Christian, do that thing. Why? Because it is well-pleasing in the sight of God. It, it, it's, it's a faith comes Faith is coupled <laughs> with not understanding. Why? Why? Because we trust God to bring forth the greater good. We trust God to bring forth the greater good. And what was the end result? What was the end result? Well, we, what we see is, you know, their relationship would have been strengthened. Right? I can just imagine, after this, Joseph going to Mary, saying, I'm sorry. <laughs> I messed up. I should have believed you. Now I see how unique you are. Uh, how, uh, now I see God's plan for our lives. Now I see all these things coming together. And I can just imagine the trust and the faith that they would have had in their new marriage. Why? Because you said, hey, Mary was faithful to me. I didn't believe her. Hey, you would have seen how they would have grown so much closer because of this. I'm so much closer. Why? Because it is how God planned it to be. But we need to make sure we need to we surrender to God's plan. And we, we see that their faith would have been magnified. It, would, it just would have grown immensely. Why? Because they knew probably Joseph, I, I, I don't know, his hardest or one of his hardest struggles in his life, that the, his shepherd was watching over him. Did you get that? In the hardest part of Joseph's life, his shepherd was watching over him. Our shepherd is always watching over us. And he will give us the comfort that we need. He will give us the peace that we need. He will give us the direction that we need. Why? Because he is our shepherd. We are his sheep. And God loves his sheep. God cares for his sheep. So their relationship would have been strengthened. Their faith would have been magnified. And we see this as that their faithfulness was rewarded. Their faithfulness was rewarded. What is a great reward? Yes, the relationship and, and all these things. It's, an, it's amazing. But part of this amazingness is, having, is being a part of God's saving plan. It's amazing. How God wants to use your life, God wants to use my life to do what? To make a difference in people's lives. To be part of his plan to draw people away from their wickedness, away from their sin. That, that's, that's why Jesus came, to draw people away from their sin and bring them into the arms, into the flock, and into the family of God. That is part of it. So, so when, when we think about all eternity and, and, and spending the rest of our eternity with God, it will be amazing. No greater thing can we be a part of 
in God's redemptive plan, how he used you to bring some people into his flock. That's amazing. God does not need us, but he desires to use us. And Joseph, he understood that it had to come to pass this way. Why? So the scriptures might be fulfilled. So, 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 so God's plan would come into fruition. And again, part of this is God's plan is always the best plan. And God's plan for our lives is the best plan. We will not understand. Why? Because we are human. We are just sheep. What are sheep? They're, they're, they're dumb. They're, they're silly. They, they need guidance. They need the shepherd. God is our shepherd. So remember, Christian, your life is not you. And, and when you commit to hold on to that truth and to do your best to be in service to others and be in service to God, it, it, it is such a blessing. Part of the part of the problem with our society, I believe it 100%, the direction that our country is going to is because people have made everything about us, about themselves. And if we're not careful, we can be guilty of the same thing. We can make everything about ourselves, including our lives. And again, that, that, that's not what Jesus' life was about. His life was about the Father's business. And he stayed faithful throughout all his life when we could not. There was no guile found in his mouth. He was sinless. He, fulfilled, he completely fulfilled God's law. He did everything that we could not do and became obedient unto death, even the death on the cross. Why? Fulfill God's plan. No greater example do we have than the Word of God who was made flesh for us who surrendered his life completely for the Lord. Here's a crazy thing about it. He understood everything. You know, I, I oftentimes, you know, I think if we really understood God's plan, he understood the sufferings of the cross. He, he understood, though he had never experienced it, he, he, he understood what it meant to be separated from the Father. You know, I, I think a part part of not understanding is the fact that if we understood, we would not do it. But I think if we understood God's saving grace and, and God's amazing power and how Emmanuel, how God is with us through it all, that, that's a truth that we need to grab a hold of. That's a truth that we need to have a hold of. Jesus died for us, was experienced separation from the Father. The one thing we will never have to experience, praise the Lord. And everything that we do in our lives, we get to do it with God. Jesus was separated from God. You cannot compare the two. You cannot compare the two. Again, he was all about his Father's business. Jesus was born to die. So stay faithful, Christian. Stay faithful. You will not understand. But just keep being faithful and watch God show up. Be grateful. Be, 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 be appreciative. Be in awe of being part of God's amazing plan. It will be glorious. Why? Because He is glorious. Because He is good. Let's stand together. We're going to have a word of invitation.